What's up guys, today I wanted to go over the recent release of Stable Diffusion. If you aren't aware what that is, Stable Diffusion is an AI model that allows one to go from text to an image similar to Dolly. And here we can see some examples. Today I wanted to go over how to run this model, but specifically I wanted to go over how to run it with a GUI, one that supports text to image, image to image, face restoration, and KLMS sampling, which is a better sampling method for this model. Let's quickly peek ahead and see what we'll have after following this video. So as we can see, we have text to image, image to image, and then GFP GAN, which is the face restoration model. Looking more at text to image, we have many different options as well as for image to image. And then here you could drop a blurry face photo and it will be upscaled and restored. Looking back at the repo, let's now go over the requirements. So you'll need an NVIDIA GPU with roughly six gigabytes of VRAM and NVIDIA Docker installed. This process will work on both Windows and Linux, but you'll need to use WSL2 if you want to run it on Windows. If you don't currently have this set up, you'll either need to look up on how to get your environment set up with NVIDIA Docker or I plan on making a video on how to do this, and if it is made at the time you're watching it, I will have a banner up now. So assuming you now have NVIDIA Docker installed and have a good enough GPU, let's go ahead and get into the setup. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is actually clone the repo, and so to do this, go up here, hit clone, and then copy the HTTPS one, and then I've already cloned it, so I'm not gonna hit enter, but then you would just do git clone and you would hit enter at this point but i already have it uh, set up so i will not be doing that after cloning the repo the next thing we'll need to do is actually build the image to build the image make sure you are at the beginning of the repo and then do cd docker and inside the folder we can see build image save container and update image and we care about building the image so mine ran right away, but yours may take a few minutes. And after that, you'll have the image built and it will be tagged as stable diffusion. After building the image or while you're building the image, it's a good idea to now download the checkpoint, the model checkpoint from Hugging Face. The URL will be in the description. Here we can see the page that you need to download the weights. And we can see right here, uh, this link right here will download the weights and it's SD v1-4 dot checkpoint you're going to want to download this and then save it as model dot checkpoint after downloading the model open up a file explorer and you're going to want to go to the diffusion model folder if it's not there yet you're going to need to copy over the model you downloaded and paste it into the diffusion model folder and important it needs to be saved as model dot checkpoint at this point, if you've done all the steps, everything should work, which is one of the nice things about using Docker for running models and why I ran it with Docker after encountering some issues. So to actually run the model, it's as simple as navigating back to the root directory. So we'll do cd dot dot to go back up one directory, back to the root. And now we just need to do run image. So we'll do dot slash run image. And now it will be launching the image that we built and then serving it on port 7860, which is where we will go to access it in our web browser. And the first time you run it, you'll need to download a few things, but uh, later on I'll show you how you can make it so you only need to download it once. So everything is now running and you could go into a web browser right now and go ahead and run it, but I'm going to show you how to go ahead and save everything so you don't need to download all this stuff again. I went ahead and opened up another terminal and we can see I'm at the root and now we want to go to Docker and then you're going to want to run save container. And what this is doing is it's going to do a command called Docker commit which is means it's going to get the current state of the image that we are running and then save it over stable diffusion, what we called it before. And now next time we run it, we shouldn't need to download everything again. 
So like I said, once you get to this point here, that means it's running and that means that we can go ahead and go in our web browser and actually run it. So here we have a new tab open and pay attention to the address bar. I'm going to type in localhost 7860 and we can see the screen that I showed you earlier in the video now. So at this point, you're good to go. You can go ahead and play around, but I'm going to spend a bit more in the video to explain a few of the things and what they do. So the prompt is pretty simple. We just type in what we want to see. So let's type in Morgan Freeman smiling. And let's just go ahead and enter that. So amazingly enough, this is what it generated. Some things we could change are the sampling steps. So more sampling steps typically means better images with diminishing returns around 50 to 100, but let's just bump it up to 150, see how it makes a difference. Let's also do the fixed faces. His face looks good here in my opinion, but it could be, I guess, a little bit better. Some other options are the sampling method, but generally, the K diffusion method is the best. I'll briefly show this image, which shows the two other sampling methods. And then there's the K sampling right here. And as we can see, it collapses on PLMS and DDIM, but it gets worse to a certain point for KLMS, but still is overall better even with higher CFG, which will explain a bit. Let's go ahead and run it again with more sampling steps and with the face fix. And let's also copy the seed so it produces the same output. And let's see what it generates now. So here we see another image with very similar results due to the seed we used. But we do see that the face is clear, especially the right eye. And uh, generally, I would recommend definitely using the, uh, the face scan. Some other options are the batch size. Batch size requires more memory, so if you have something like an RTX 3090, you can get away with 4 or 5. If you have something on the lower end, like a 6 gigabyte of VRAM, you're going to want to keep it down to 1. You'll see in the terminal if you get an out of memory error, and you're just going to want to lower this if you do get that error. The classifier free guidance scale is what it says here, how strongly the image should follow the prompt. If you type a prompt and it doesn't really follow it, you can try increasing this. But if you increase it too much, you may get some weird results. So ideally, you want to keep it around 7 to 8 if things are working well and increase it as needed. One of the really cool things that's important to note is this right here, the create prompt matrix. So this will allow us to try different combinations seeing how it affects the output. So let's say we want Morgan Freeman smiling, but we also want with a hat on and we also want to see if we give it like 8k for the prompt what that does so let's go ahead and generate this now and we'll see a grid for the output and you'll see that soon so this is with the same seed and we see the grid output so see how this is lighter and this is darker um, that means like on or off so we have morgan freeman with nothing and then morgan freeman with the hat on Morgan Freeman with a hat on and 8K, and then Morgan Freeman just 8K. So this is really cool for playing around with prompts to seeing what gets the best results. Personally, I like this one right here the best, but maybe I thought 8K would be best, and um, I wouldn't know easily without trying out this tool right here. Let's now briefly look at the image to image tab. So what this does is it allows you to give it an initial image and a prompt and then get an output that goes along with the input image and the prompt. So the sampling steps and the faces and the prompt matrix are all the same, as well as the batch size, batch count, and the CFG. What denoising strength does is it's between zero and one, and closer to one you get, the more it follows the prompt. Closer to zero, it more preserves the original image. So let's go ahead and actually do the prompt, sample prompt that it gives, and let's do it in a prompt matrix style, and we'll use the sample image as well. So here we have it. I increase the sampling steps to 150, I put it in prompt matrix format, and I check the box, 
and everything else I kept the default. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. And here we can see the output. This without Trinity on ArtStation and this with. Lastly, I'll go over this tab. This tab is pretty simple. You just drop an image in, a face, and then the effect strength, and then hit submit. You should really only need to use this if you forget to check it beforehand, but it's good to know it's here. If you guys get any cool text to image pairs, image to image pairs, or anything else cool, be sure to come join the Discord and share them with everybody. Or feel free to leave down in the comments below your prompt as well as your seed so others can see what you made. I also just wanted to say that while I created the Docker scripts and the Docker file, I did not create this code. It was published on an anonymous re-entry uh, website and I did not see an author, otherwise I would give credit. And with that, I'm going to end today's video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. I cover technology and a wide variety of AI models. So if you like this kind of content, there's plenty more to come. Lastly, consider joining the Discord for chats as well as tentacle help. Thanks for watching and please have a great day.